which will become walls. Inside, a heap of sand is being shoveled up. But it's not just any old sand from the beach, you know, because to make glass, we need to dig sand that is rich in a mineral called silica. And it's all going to be mixed up with cullet, recycled glass, mostly from bottle banks, and then with calcium carbonate and sodium carbonate in amounts that will determine the type of glass you will produce. And it all ends up here in the hopper. Like a giant egg timer, the hopper allows the sandy mix to drop slowly down into the fiery mouth of the hot furnace. A special camera inside shows the gas flame reducing the sandy mix into a pool of liquid glass. The huge furnace sends out a steady stream of the white-hot liquid into a pair of heat-proof shears. They cut the molten glass into viscous lumps called gobs. Like little balls of fire, the gobs are directed by steel chutes, taking each one to the bottle-making machine. And this poor Jap has a very dangerous job. He has to keep all the moulds clean with an oily stick, looking out for the gobs as they fall in, so they don't burn his hand off. Now the bottom of the first mould shapes the neck, which will become the top of the bottle. It's turned over and put into the next mould, where it's pumped up with compressed air and pushed against the sides to form the final bottle shape. The bottles are rather soft still, so they have to be coated with a special chemical with a horrible name. It's called monobutyl tin chloride. Although it forms only a very thin layer, it stops the bottles from scratching one another when they're finally packaged. Here they're being kept warm, so they can be allowed to cool off slowly inside the tempering machine. Before they're packed, they have to be lined up ready for testing. <gasps> There's one going the wrong way! The first test is done by the Is the hole in the top of the bottle the right size machine? and then to the bright lights of the inspection chamber, where a camera looks for cracks and bubbles. Woe betide any bottle that fails the test, for it will be recycled as cullet and put back into the fiery furnace. The ones that pass are stacked and packed and sent away. Soon the bottles made here are filled with all the special things we like to eat, all that make us well, such as medicines. And, of course, there are the lovely things we like to drink. But how are the bottles filled before they get to the shops? Well, that happens here, in the super clean and hygienic world of the bottling factory. The drink, whatever it might be, arrives in a tanker, and after testing, an extraction pipe is attached at the bottom. An air pipe is attached to the top. A compressor is turned on and the air is pumped into the pipe at the top so the drink is pushed out of the bottom into the filling machine. Also heading for the filling machine, the bottles. Brown ones this time. They're checked to make sure they're clean and undamaged. Then, as an extra precaution, they're rinsed out and turned upside down to be drained before the drink goes in. The filling machine here fills them very quickly indeed and after filling, the bottles need capping. A quick turn and the caps are on. And after all that, there's still a bit of froth stuck to the top of each bottle, so it's off for a hot shower. A couple of hours in this pasteuriser kills any germs that may have got into the system. And now the bottles are ready to go into another machine. Can you guess what it is? It's the labeler! A quick squirt of air to remove the drips of water from around the cap and the bottles are all ready to be packed. And in all these processes, not a human hand was involved. Except for the one with the oily stick, of course.